So music theory can be very daunting at first. There's a lot of concepts that are very overwhelming. But from my experience, unless you're like reading sheet music or composing concertos in like neoclassical or contemporary music, most of the stuff you really don't need to know. So today I'm gonna just show you like the basic concepts if you're making mostly like modern music such as like pop, EDM. Piano so whenever you like drawing your notes on your DAW, have you ever noticed that there's a piano on this side? Basically this piano on the side is called a piano roll. It's basically a display that allows you to record or draw in your MIDI notes. Now, piano roll doesn't only mean it plays piano sound. It could play anything that you like depending on the plugin that you load up in your DAW, like a violin or a drum kit or even weird sounds such as this. I'm gay. So looking at a piano keyboard layout, in music theory, there are 12 notes in music. The white keys represent these letters and the black keys represent these letters. And we call these letters notes. Each note has their own independent sound. Scale. A scale is a collection of notes that sound good together when played in a sequence. And the most common types of scales used in modern music are major and minor scales. So let's take for example, C major. As you can hear, C major sounds happy. Major scales in general sound happy. Now if you want to make the scale minor, you would take the third, the sixth, and the seventh, and lower them a half a semitone, and you would get your minor scale. In this case, this is C minor. Minor scales in general sound sad and depressing. Chords. Chords are a collection of notes played together that's basically it. Now the requirements of a chord is you need three or more notes to be considered as a chord. Let's make a major chord starting in C. So if we start at C as a root note and we want to make C major, you need a third and a fifth. So the third in the key of C would be E and the fifth note in the key of C would be a G. So if we play it together, that's a major chord. It sounds happy, flappy, slappy. Now, if you want to make it a minor chord, you would take the third, lower it a half step. Then if we play it together, you get your minor chord. Chord progression. So chord progressions are a succession of notes that are played in a harmonious way. Before we can understand chord progressions, I drew out all the chords used in the C major scale. Also, you'll notice there are Roman numerals on the bottom. These Roman numerals start from one to seven. We're not gonna go into too much detail on the Roman numerals, but all you gotta know is a capitalized Roman numeral represents a major chord, a lowercase Roman numeral represents a minor chord, and a Roman numeral that contains a circle represents a diminished chord. So this is is all the chords that are available in the C major scale. In modern music, such as like future bass, pop, synth pop, trap, you name it, the most common numerals used in these chord progressions are one, four, five, and six. And they're used in different variations. You can mess around with these numerals, or you can mess around with other numerals that aren't really commonly used. It's up to your preference. Using it all together. So now you kind of got an idea about how scales and chord progressions kind of work. So how would we use these concepts when making a track? So I'm going to make like a small drop. And before we actually start, we first have to figure out our tempo. I'm not going to go into details about time signatures or tempos. That'll be for another video. So I'm just going to assume you kind of know it. I'm going to probably aim for probably a Porter Robinson style probably like 90 BPM. I think it's a pretty good tempo. Already loaded up a piano patch. And usually this is kind of like how I go about when making a track. I usually like to start off with the chord progression. Before we can figure out a chord progression, we first have to figure out what key are we going to make this track in. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to stick with C major. So I'm going to come up with like a chord progression and we'll see what happens. And I'm gonna make some adjustments and quantize these notes cause this is EDM. As you can see, all I'm using is just the one, the four, the five, and the six chord. And normally what I like to do when I'm making chords is I usually take the third and make it an octave higher. So instead of getting this to sound like this, it actually sounds like this. 
So yeah, that's our chord progression. So we're gonna start and get our synths. I'm not gonna go into sound design. This is not a sound design tutorial. I'm just gonna copy this and just paste it here. This Sounds all right, but it kind of sounds kind of weak. So what we can do, we can add probably a, another saw chord. I'll add a serum this time. I'll just make like a simple saw chord. And we could copy this one and put it here. And we can make this an octave lower to add some weight. It still sounds a bit empty in the low end, so what we can do is create a sub bass because this is EDM. And usually what I do is I just copy the chords and I just remove the third and the fifths on all the chords. So I just get the root of the chord. I just make this also an octave lower. You're getting where this is going? So if we heard it all together. Of course, the mix isn't well. That's not what we're aiming for right now. But the chords sound very boring. So here's what, what we can do. So let's just take the silent one patch instead of chords. Let's make these into 16th notes. We had the arpeggiator turned off. We're gonna turn this on. Okay, now it sounds a bit moving because, well, that's what the preset is. And now we're gonna add more notes. I added more notes to the chord to make it more interesting. This is what it sounds like. You see, now it sounds a lot more better. Like if we heard it before. So here are the core names for the chords that I use for this chord progression. Now, if these names look very confusing, don't really worry about it. I'll give you some tips when it comes to making chords. So take, for example, the C major chord. If we add a seventh, we would have a C major seventh chord. And if we add a ninth, we would have a C major ninth. The same idea goes with a minor chord. Taking C minor for example, we can add a 7th, making this a C minor 7th, uh, adding a 9th, C minor 9th. We can also add a 13th, making this a C minor 13th. Now taking the C major chord again, we can also make this a suspension chord. We can take this E and drag it to a D, so if we play it, we would have a C sus2, the 2 standing for D being the second note in a C major scale. Now if we take this D and move it to an F, if we play it, we would have a C sus4, 4 meaning F being the fourth note in a C major scale. A C6 chord, similar to a C major 7 chord, all you're doing is adding a 6. Now this dash 9 that you see on a chord in my chord progression, that basically means an added 9. Basically you're just adding a 9 to that chord. So taking this C6 for example, if we added a 9th, you would have a C6-9. Now it's getting somewhere. I'm gonna add like a simple beat pattern, a typical 4-4 beat if you know what I mean. Every snare will be on the second and fourth beat for each bar. And every kick will be on the first and third beat for each bar. And I'll just add like some ride loop. Of course, if we want to make this more interesting, we can add a sidechain. If you don't know what a sidechain is, basically imagine a sidechain as a volume knob. It's basically lowering the volume then raising the volume in a rhythmic way. We can also control the rhythm using the right slider, which allows you to control the amount of sidechain that happens. If that sounds kind of confusing, imagine the sidechain like a rhythmic note. Keep in mind, our time signature is in four over four. Right now we're in the rate of one over four. One over four stands for a quarter note. In music theory, it takes four quarter notes to equal one bar. So the plugin will continuously do the side chain four times each bar and that'll give you this sound. We can change the rate, let's say one over 16. One over 16 standing for 16th note. In music theory, it takes 16 notes to equal one bar. So the plugin will do the side chain continuously 16 times for each bar. This gives it a future bassy type of sound if you listen to it. 
conclusion. I hope this gives you insight of what music theory is and how it's used in making music. I highly recommend you know basic music theory. It'll be a lot easier to make music and you don't have to keep guessing a lot. If you want to learn more about music theory, there's a great course offered by Melodics. I want to thank Melodics for sponsoring this video. Melodics just released a music theory course. It goes more in detail on scales, chromatic scales, pentatonic scales, and chord progressions. You can find it in the link below. For a limited time, it's free, so get it while you can. If you want me to make more videos kind of like this, let me know, and um, I'll see you in the next video.